Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Dreo PTC fan heater with ALCI safety plug. So if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So we have a lot of acronyms just in the title here. PTC is for positive temperature coefficient. So essentially what that means is the heater in here is self-limiting. As it gets hotter, the resistance increases, and that essentially keeps it from getting too hot. And then we have ALCI, and that is appliance leakage current interrupter. So that's a safety device in the plug. So let's get this open. So I want to mention I'm getting this for my RV. Our RV has a gas heater, but when you go to a RV park, you get free electricity. So it'd be nice to heat it up with this heater as opposed to using our gas. So there were a number of features I wanted in a heater. And I think this ticks all the boxes. We will see. So the plug has a protector on it. You want to make sure you take that off. Here's that ALCI. So it has a test and reset, just like a GFCI adapter would. Get the rest of the plastic off here. So some of the features I wanted on this was at least two heating modes. So I was looking for one with two heat settings, one of 750 and 1500 watts, but this is 900, 1000 and 1500 watts. But I think that'll do the trick for us. So it comes with a manual here. I also wanted one that was oscillating. So this one does oscillate. That way I don't have to have a separate fan to blow the heat around. Or I may use a separate fan, but I can put the fan in a separate area. I don't have to have it next to the heater. And I also wanted a remote. So when I'm in bed in my RV, I don't have to get up to turn it on or off. Like if it gets really hot at night or it gets cold, I can just hit a button on the remote and change the temperature. And one reason I don't want to do that is I don't want to disturb the other people in the RV by getting up. So we have a manual here. Looks like we can extend our warranty. There's a couple pages of safety stuff. So you do want to read through all this. So modern electric heaters tend to be very, very safe if you follow the instructions. When these things cause fires, it's typically because someone is not following the instructions. So they're overloading a circuit. They're throwing their clothes on top of these. They're putting it behind a curtain or something. So you want to make sure you follow the safety instructions. So this talks about the ALCI device. This says the front surface gets hot, very hot. The rated power is 1500 watts. The remote control battery is a CR2025. So keep that in mind. This says know your heater. We have the control panel on top, LED display on the front, the air outlet and the base. On the back we have a handle, the air inlet, dust filter, and the plug. So here we have that handle to lift it. That's very handy. And we have this filter. I'll show taking that off here in a minute. It says touch the power button to turn it on or off. When the heater is plugged in to the electrical outlet, the power indicator will light red. Once turned off, a 30 second countdown will show up on the display as the fan will continue to run for 30 seconds to blow out the remaining heat. So this little menu is the mode settings. It has the three settings for the 900, 1000, and 1500 watts. It says for eco, the heater will automatically select its optimal heating power depending on the difference between the set temperature and the ambient temperature. When it reaches the set point, it will still run for 30 seconds to cool it off. When it drops below the set point, it will turn back on and it will turn on to whatever temperature it thinks it needs to get back up to temperature. So the buttons make sounds. If you want to mute those, you can long press the mode button to mute it. There's an auto off timer. You can set it to automatically turn off between zero to 12 hours. To cancel it, you set the timer to zero hour. It has plus or minus to set the temperature. And then we have this little smile looking button to turn on and off the oscillation. More safety tips. We have the LED display. The display turns off after one minute. So one thing I do want to know is if there's lights on this that are going to keep me up at night. And these are the different things I'll show up on there. It has a memory function. It will remember the last settings when you turn it on or off. It has a 24 hour auto off has tip protection and overheat protection. So those are some of those safety features I was talking about that you'll find on modern heaters. This has those, that's very nice. And then we have the remote control, has the same controls on it. This talks about how to replace the batteries. You press in on the little button and the battery tray will come out. This talks about cleaning it. I'll hold that up here so you can pause and read through that if you need to. And some troubleshooting, customer service. I think that's everything. So then we have these other cards here. Extend the warranty, it's like a thank you card. So to activate the remote, I'll pull out this tab. Now the battery is activated. I'll plug in the heater. So I will say, I have this plugged in here to a kilowatt, a surge protector. I have a power strip back here plugged into an extension cord plugged into the wall. This is not a good example of how to power this. You really should have this plugged into the wall directly. If you do for some reason need to use an extension cord, you should use a very heavy duty extension cord. You don't want to use one of those really thin lamp cords. That's a good way to start a fire. But I'm just doing this for demonstration. There's no way I would leave this here. I'll make sure this is unplugged before I leave the room. So on standby mode, it's drawing 0.7 watts. So let's turn this on, the power button. Okay, so it's on heating mode three. So that's the highest mode. So we'll see the watts here 
it's up to 1700 1600 watts so i'm guessing that'll adjust itself here as it goes on yeah that's dropping down to about 1500 watts so i'll hit the mode we're on h3 now so if i hit plus or minus i can drop this down to the middle mode that's 1000 watts so now we're drawing 972 drop it down again and we're at it should drop down now it's at 882 so it's dropping down a little bit then if we hit that mode button we have the temperature so it's 85 degrees and I can use plus or minus to adjust that. I'll press it again and we just have the fan. So I don't know that this is the best fan out there, but say you have this in your RV, you don't have any other fan around and it's hot, you could turn this on and it could circulate some air. So speaking of circulate, I'll hit the oscillation button. Oh, and there's actually a protective film on this I could take off. So I'll hit the oscillate button. And here we have the oscillation. So I am getting a little bit of a smell off this, which is not uncommon with a new heater. They might put some protectant on it, but it's not bad. I mean, you can barely smell it at all, and I think it's mostly gone. So I'll turn it back on a heat mode. There we go. Looks like it has the mute on here also, so if I press these buttons, you can hear the beeps. I'll hit mute, and you can actually see when mute is on. Let me turn off the lights and see if that shows up a little better. And then we have the timer. So each time I press the timer button, this goes up until it hits 12. If it's at zero, it turns the timer off. So I'll say that is incredibly easy to use. And the front here, it's getting super hot. Let's see what the rest of it's like. It's cool on top. It's pretty cool in the back, cool in the bottom. Leave my hand here. It's actually very cool. I mean, I barely can tell my hands in front of a heater. I mean, I can, but it's not hot at all. But I can feel the heat hitting me. So the heat is radiating out from this. So I'm going to turn this off and we can see that 30 second countdown timer. Okay, so it's shut off. Let's check out the filter on the back. Pop that open. Actually, you should unplug it. I'll at least turn the switch off. Okay. So this is just kind of a mesh. It would keep like lint and stuff out so you could rinse that off and dry it and then put it back. See if we can look inside here a little bit. It's kind of hard to see. There's some fins in here. They look almost like a cooling fin type of a thing. So we have that metal grill wrapped around the side. This is all plastic here. And we have the filter in the back. We have the handle here, the base. Here's the bottom. There are no rubber feet on here. It's just plastic. So this is offset here. I don't know. Let's see if I can move this manually. It does not feel like I can straighten that back out. So I'll probably have to turn it back on to straighten that out. Although I could store it like this, but you know, if you have some OCD, you may not like that. So I'm going to go take this out to my camper and I'm going to run this a bit. And then I'm going to take my thermal camera up because I'm curious how much of the space around this is heating up. So I may set this on the floor of the countertop, probably the countertop, because that's where the outlet is. I want to see if it's heating up that countertop really bad because I really don't want this to melt the countertop. And I put my hand here, it felt pretty cool, but I'll let this run for a while and then I'll have a better idea. Okay, so I'm in the camper now I have this turned on high so here this is blowing out heat now and actually I'd probably have this on the oscillate mode so I'm going to let this run for a bit and then I'm going to get my thermal camera out and I want to check the surrounding surface here and see if this countertop is getting hot or anything because I don't want this to melt and if I put my hand down here it feels very cold right now so we'll see what that warms up to and actually I'll do a thermal camera right now and then I'll come back later after it's heated up a little bit and check it again okay so here it is with the thermal camera we can see inside the heater is I don't know, about 240 degrees if we look at the countertop it's currently at 61 degrees 50 degrees here we have the cord about 70 degrees the plugs at 66. So I'm going to let this run for a bit and I'll come out and check it out. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes. So here we can see the countertop in front of it is around 60 degrees. Let's scoot right up real close to the heater. And there it's like 61, 62. And it's very cool on the countertop here. I mean, it's almost cold. It feels good on my hand. If I raise up to about here, I start feeling the heat and you can see that hit my hand. Look at the top of this. That's at about 80. Look at the plug. 
it's pretty hot right here on the end. That's 90, it says. The wire's warm to touch, but not hot. So the floor is 57. The ceiling here is 78. So it's definitely warming this place up. So I step back a bit and you can see the heater here is on the counter and this is the wall across from it. So you can see this is really heating up. You can see where it's heating up. So that's at 84 degrees. If we go down right about here, that's about counter depth. If we go below that, it's cooler. So you can see it's really throwing that heat across the way. So I think our plan is probably to keep this on the counter at night to heat the place. It'll probably get cold down here. I may have some fans to circulate. Maybe during the day I'll set it on the floor somewhere. And I don't really want to heat this real hot when we're not here, but I'll just kind of, you know, maybe set a low temperature point on here. But I think this is going to work very well. And another thing to point out, when I turn this off, this is going to run for 30 seconds. And when it's done, this is cool enough to touch. And I'll demonstrate that here in a second. So I'll speed up the video. Okay, it's off now. Yeah, that's cool enough to touch. So a baby could touch that and they would not get burnt. I mean, it's just barely warm. So I didn't notice this earlier. Let me shut the light off here. It does have one little red light there that's on. So I don't know if you covered that up with some sort of tape, if it would melt or fall off. I think I can live with a light that small. So I think this is going to be a great option for our camper. When we're not using it, we can easily store it away somewhere in the camper, but that should work really well to dial in the heat in here. So that's the Dreo PTC fan heater with ALCI safety plug. So I mentioned this didn't line up when I shut it off and I was able to hit the oscillator and hit the button and I got it lined up pretty good. It stops pretty much immediately, so that's easy to do. But I think this is gonna be a great thing to have in our camper. It'll be nice to heat it with electricity when we're plugged into power, I won't have to use my propane. Also, if the propane heater were to quit working, it could use it. And this could also just be nice around the house in an emergency. Now, I don't like heating my house with resistive heat. I have a heat pump and I have a gas furnace and those are going to be more efficient than this. But if we just needed to heat up a certain area a little bit more, you could use this as opposed to turning the furnace up in the whole house. But my main concern with this was that it was going to be safe and I feel confident enough that this has all the safety features that I need in it. Of course only time will tell. Certainly if I ever had safety concerns with this I would make another video and I would pin a comment at the beginning of this video directing people to that. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments. If you like this video please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time goodbye.